Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is the 15th lecture of this number theory series. And in this lecture, we are going to study how we can calculate binomial coefficient using inverse modulo. So the problem is simple. You are given Q queries. In each query, you are given two numbers n and k, and you have to calculate uh, n choose k, and you have to print it modulo p. And in this case, p, which is a prime number, is greater than n would be given as a prime number now uh, there are two cases uh, first one as I have mentioned here where P the number uh, with which we have to calculate modulo would be greater than n and there may be some situations where P would be smaller than n if P is smaller than n then we would use Lu uh, Lucas theorem otherwise we would normally use the method that I am going to teach here most of the uh, most of the times you would be asked to print it modulo 10 as far 9 plus 7 which is a prime number and which is way above n in most of the cases if n is up to 10 plus 6 so p which is 10 plus 9 plus 7 would be much greater than that if p is something like 10 plus 6 plus 7 which is a prime number but and n can be as large as say 10 plus 7 then you see n is greater than p in that case we would use Lucas theorem otherwise we would use uh, it simply inverse modulo to calculate a uh, binomial coefficient so if we must know that uh, n choose k is equals to n factorial divided by k factorial into n minus k factorial right uh, since we are working with modulo p which is transfer 9 plus 7 so i can rewrite the formula in this form so n choose k is equals to n factorial modulo p into oh sorry divide by k factorial modulo p into n minus k factorial uh, modulo p sorry uh, the factorial size uh, sign needs to be inside this is n minus k factorial modulo p so this factorial sign would be inside so this n choose k modulo p can be calculated using this formula right because we are working with modulo uh, uh, modulo system modulo system that's why we can actually convert this formula into this and we can calculate n c k modulo p using this formula so first of all what we need is n factorial modulo p the first thing uh, just forget that there is something in division for now just think about this we have to first calculate n factorial modulo p uh, suppose n is up to 10 plus 6 so what we are going to do we are going to pre-calculate all of the factorial modulo p so if modulo was suppose mod let's say p so it is 10 plus 9 plus 7 right so let's take uh, let's first increase the size now uh, let's take an array f for factorial up to times plus six so what we would be doing let me create some space so we know factorial of zero is equals to factorial of one and that is one from two to times plus six what we are going to do we are going to pre-calculate all of the factorials so when you need to calculate n factorial p we don't have to actually calculate n factorial modulo p we can directly take the value which would be stored at n so f of n would store factor uh, n factorial modulo p so as we know uh, i factorial i factorial uh, n factorial is nothing but n minus 1 factorial into n right so this is what we are going to use so i factorial is nothing but i minus 1 factorial multiply with i but since we need to calculate it modulo p that is why what we are going to do we are going to take modulo of it now since uh, this whole expression can be 
uh, can go outside the range of integer that is why it is important to write one ll one ll is one which is long long so when you multiply an expression with long long then the whole expression would be converted into long long so there won't be any integer overflow so what we are doing here is basically we are calculating factorial of each number modulo p so we are pre-calculating everything so now suppose uh, after pre-calculation suppose we are given q queries and in each query we will be given n and k right so each time we would read n and k and we would print print and choose k which is binomial coefficient so let uh, this c is actually a function which will return integer so c int n int k so it would basically return n choose k which is the binomial coefficient so if uh, first condition it is important check uh, to check whether if k is greater than n there is no way you can uh, you can choose k objects which are greater than n so if k is greater than n the result is going to be zero otherwise result exists so we know the result is going to be n factorial modulo p divided by k factorial modulo, uh, modulo p into n minus k factorial modulo p right so result is going to be n factorial modulo p that is the base and then we have to divide it by two integers this and this so first let's start from uh, base which is n factorial modulo p now since f of n contains n factorial modulo p so we can directly take it in constant time since we have pre-calculated it we can directly take n factorial modulo p which is f of n only now we need to divide the result by k factorial modulo p and n minus k factorial modulo p now since we already have k factorial modulo p at f of k right so we need to divide the result by f of k but this won't be good because we are working in modulo uh, system so if you uh, the division in modulo system is not directly uh, division but it is dividing uh, to division is simply multiplication of that number so if you need to divide result with some number say x then what you have to do is multiply result with inverse of x inverse means modulo inverse of x so since we need to divide result with f of k that is k factorial so what we would do we would actually find the inverse of k factorial and instead of divi dividing it we need to multiply it with its inverse so what we would do we would multiply result with inverse of k factorial right f of k stores k factorial so instead of division in modulo arithmetic what you do we find inverse of that number with which we need to divide and then multiply instead of finding uh, is instead of dividing so we need to find inverse modulo of k factorial now if you uh, remember from the previous lecture in lecture 13 i guess we have seen uh, that we can use a uh, fermat's little theorem to calculate inverse and the way to do is that to calculate number raised to the power p minus 2 i have explained how uh, uh, how we calculate inverse modulo in that lecture i guess it was lecture 13 so go and check out that lecture first so since we need to divide it with k factorial so we would find uh, inverse modulo of this and to find inverse modulo of that you need to calculate power p minus 2 p which is that prime with which we need to take a uh, modulo that is why p and p already de is defined 10 power 9 plus 7 most, most of the queries you would get uh, with 10 power 9 plus 7 uh, it would be good as long as p the number with which we need to get uh, we need to take modulo is a prime and p is greater than n so for example i am taking it 
to be transfer 9 plus 7. Now since uh, we need to calculate this number raised to the power p minus 2, we need to create the power function which is a raised to the power n result is equal to 1 while n I have explained uh, we, we are going to use binary exponentiation I have already explained how binary exponentiation works or basically how you, how you can calculate a raised to the power n in log n time so if n is odd that is if n modulo 2 that is if n is odd then result is equals to result into a modulo p but the problem is this expression itself can go outside the bound of uh, integer 32 bit integer so that is why we need to multiply this one error so it, we don't get any integer or flow error and then now n divide equals 2 and a is equals to again a into 1 ll into a modulo p and finally return the result so this function does nothing but calculates a raised to the power n so to calculate inverse of a number all you have to do is calculate that number's power raised to p minus 2 and then this is going to be re uh, returning the inverse of a k factorial now instead of dividing by k factorial what we are going to do we are we are finding the inverse of k factorial and then we would multiply it with result so after multiplying of course you need to take mode again and after dividing by k factorial we also need to divide by n minus k factorial so again take result is equals to result into power now this time we need to find the inverse modulo of n minus k so n minus k raised to power p minus 2 and finally this this would be the inverse of k n minus k factorial after multiplying with result we need to take mode of it and then finally return result this would be this would be our final result which is n choose k so i think this should work and we should not get any error okay yeah we didn't get any error okay so we need to give the number of queries like these many queries and each time we give n n k to calculate n choose k so 5 choose 7 needs to be 0 and 5 choose 5 needs to be 1 but the result is minus this one which clearly is wrong so f of 0 f of 1 is equal to 1 for the rest i s factorial is equal to i minus 1 into i modulo p which is perfectly fine the result is equal to n factorial oh sorry we are multiplying it without considering the integer overflow that is why this is important either you can declare all of the variables long log int or if you are declaring them integer then keep or uh, keep in mind that integer overflow may occur for that to handle that condition you can multiply it with one which is long long so one ll is that so now we should not get that error so we have these many queries 570 5 c5 5 is 1 as you can see 5c2 is 10 which is correct okay and now 10c3 120 so i think everything is per, uh, working perfectly fine even if you uh, try to calculate it for very large numbers like this you are still not going to get any negative number the result would be fine in fact this is n choose k modulo p so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching if you have any query just post it down in the comments so thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you